whips and you never get sick of nose wheel eclipse then I have got a present for you it's a video blog from Mr. BQ do yourself a favor and tune in to his YouTube degrees snow on the ground it's cold but I'm going to ride I met a guy the other day that had an electric dirt bike and it's a pretty small riding area where I ride at uh, whenever I come here and there was a couple guys over there that I didn't know they were over there beside the track and I went over there to introduce myself this one guy Dane was like hey you want to ride my electric bike he's like I, I made it myself for real so I'll ride that thing so rode a few laps on it and uh, I had a lot of fun I was thinking later, I was like, I should have made a video of that because I posted the pictures that Jess took and th there were so many questions about it. You know, there were so many things that people wondered and honestly, I don't even know a lot about the bike, which I should before I get on somebody else's bike. I didn't. That's why I'm coming over here in the snow and the, the bad weather to come ride this dirt bike and uh, ask Dane some more questions about it. I'm almost at the dirt bike track and I'm ready to ride. So I really hope we get some cool stuff and I hope you guys enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. Right there? Yeah, that's good. And then a 10 wrench is what is uh Well, I'm gonna go ride this electric bike. The track's a little slick, a little uh, a little wet, a little frozen, but it's gonna be alright. We're gonna go ride dirt bike. Push the button on your right hand there. Oh, that one? Flip the switch forward. Good to go. That's it? Yeah. Perfect. See ya. Got that one on video. Yeah, that's, so slick. <laughs> that's, that's ice right there for sure. <laughs> well, that was cool. I think that's the first time that bike's been on its side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't catch on fire. So that's, yeah, we're, that's, that's good. Gotta crash eventually. problem is my battery isn't so she's dead I'm gonna go charge it and uh, it's gonna be back for more here in a little bit yeah, <laughs> yeah we may have it's to sand too that didn't work See, no matter what it is with the battery, the battery's eventually gonna die. No, it totally is. Oh yeah, we got this. Alright, <laughs> 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 right, we're good. Let's just go. Just let's try. get back. Brett, you're, you seem to be following a bit close. Yeah, I'm trying to do a no-hander back here, but I don't think I can. It's just handy for that. That's typical. We got a Yamaha being charged. Honda. It's 4.30. The bike's charging. I'm Insta360ing it up. 
getting some electrical tape in place here just so you can see how awesome this bike is firsthand but also i got a microphone and i'm gonna put it up to my helmet that way i can talk to you guys lucky you we're running out of daylight it's getting a little bit dark it's getting a little bit cold er but it's gonna be fine the trees were a little bit slick but I'm really sorry also because you're gonna be able to hear how out of shape I am because I'm gonna be breathing so hard because there's no dirt bike noises there's no nothing except me going and I have asthma so you gotta forgive me please Then I'll check the battery. It's a measure of amp hours. Okay. It's a what? It's an amp hour. So it's how many amps it's been for, it'll go for one hour. So you, in that distance, in that eight seconds, that is the equivalent of 1.3 amps for a whole hour at 100 gotcha. volts. So in 45 seconds. The in the snow, right? I don't know, maybe. It's, it's waterproof. Yeah, it's like waterproof until it's, until it's not, not waterproof. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, right, probably sweet. fine. Cool. Well, it's a white bike, white snow. It's all fine. Dane Sires. He is the magic man behind this electric dirt bike that I've been riding. And uh, he's going to tell you a little bit more about it. What inspired you to make this thing? Well, the electric bike, this is actually the second iteration of it. The first one I built uh, for 7.4 Promotions Extreme Enduro about four years ago. And I thought, you know, it'd be great just have an electric bike because then you can't stall it. Going over the firewood pile and the rocks and all that stuff. And so I thought, I'll, I'll conjure up an electric bike for that. And so I put that bike together. I built it out of a 99YZ400. And this was the first one, not the one Brett's riding today. It's, uh, I'd call it more of a dump truck than anything else as far as uh, handling characteristics on that machine. Uh, but after having that bike for a couple of years, I, you know, I thought, oh, what are all the shortcomings of this bike? And what would I really want an electric bike to be? And, you know, I wanted to use it just for riding uh, for, you know, daily purposes. And so I, got a hold of a 15 uh, Yamaha YZ450 rolling chassis and uh, started building from there. So the bike that Brett's riding today um, is I call the YZ450A. Uh, the battery can kick out 450 amps to the motor controller, which then takes that, puts it down to the motor. Uh, it comes out about 50 horsepower. Um, you can maybe attest to that. Does it feel like that on the butt dyno? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I haven't put on a dyno, but it feels pretty comparable to my 450 until the, the battery starts going south, but um, until then, it's, it's pretty darn, pretty powerful. Battery doesn't last for too long. Um, it's a different kind of lithium cell, uh, maybe different to different than some of the batteries that you may have heard about, maybe in the Alta or a Tesla, which uses a lot of little bitty cylindrical cells that look like double A's. These are great big flat cells. Uh, you can pull a lot of power out of them really quick, and then you can also push the power back in if you want to charge them up fast. So that's one one difference in the, in the automotive world that's going to start to come into and become more of a factor where we can charge these things a lot, a lot quicker. Um, 
again, this bike, you know, I'm building it with recycled cells. Um, they're actually out of a Honda, if it makes you feel any better, Honda Clarity. That's the reason uh, that I actually got on it. <laughs> so, a couple of modules out of a Honda Clarity is what's powering the bike. It's uh, around just under three kilowatt hours, which is a little better than half of the capacity in Alta. But um, with this bike, you can, you can really give her the beans for, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes out on an MX track and then come back in and fast charge it up. I obviously don't have my fast charger uh, quite built up today. I kind of got a Franken charger set up over there charging the bike with two generators and two chargers all stacked together. And, but we'll get her charged back up in about, I don't know, 40 minutes here or so. So there's radiators on this bike. For a long time, I thought that the radiators were just a placeholder kind of, so you have something to grip with your knees and the plastic would fit and it would all work. Uh, but it turns out you actually are gonna put those to use what's uh, what's up with that yeah so at least one of the radiators I'm, I'm actually going to use uh, the bike the motor has the ability to be liquid cooled and it will need to be liquid cooled once we get the temperatures warmed up a little bit to just a normal amount it's what is it, 35 degrees a day don't need any liquid cooling today but uh, once we hit you know the summer months we're, we're gonna run liquid cooling to the motor and also possibly the controller um, as I had talked about the batteries before the batteries really don't get very hot they're built to really be able to extract power from. The motor on the other hand, uh, I am running it a little uh, little on the hot side as far as performance, so it, it will need to be liquid cooled. Your hands aren't going like this when you're yeah. crashing on a motorcycle, your feet are doing that and your hands are death gripping on the bars, right? So that's why I think having a lever there in an Alta does not have, doesn't have a left brake there or anything. And I think some of the guys that have in the Alta community they are taking and converting their bikes to left brake and just getting rid of the foot brake altogether. But uh, so what about the four one fifteen combo sprocket you got on that thing? How big is that sprocket? That thing is massive. That's the biggest sprocket I've ever seen. Yep. So it's uh it's a ten tooth and a sixty six. It's like Doug DeMolke. Really king. Right. It's and it, and it is a stunt a stunt rear sprocket. I'm not sure what it was originally supposed to go on, but it. Uh, a lot of people will talk about oh electric motors they're all torque they're all torque it's like yeah they have they have torque but you know only as only a certain amount of it so to get the bike to feel like a 450f in third gear which was my original goal um, i did need to have a significant reduction from the shaft of the motor to the rear wheel and i think it, i hit it pretty close not bad yeah, about, about third gear oh, i like it um so that's the reason for the ratio and actually the day that I think the day that Brett rode it was the first day that I had the 66 tooth on it. Otherwise, I started with a 60 tooth. And there's a few pictures floating around with the 60 on it. And uh, went to the 66 after that. And I would have gone to a 69 tooth sprocket, you know, just to make Ronnie Matt happy. I was going to say, just for the sole purpose. Just for that purpose. 69. Yeah, you know, That's if we could tell him that it has 69 horsepower yeah. and a 69 tooth sprocket, and he cut the fenders off, he might want to take you, it for a spin as well. We could convert it. <laughs> it's yeah. not a four stroke. So yeah, could, that's, that's true. It's a, it's a what, what, I don't even know what you'd say. It's a six or nine stroke. Probably, yeah, it's just one of them. How much does this bike weigh? The bike weighs 246 pounds. I was over 365, but that's, that's all right. It's not quite 365. Not, not quite not, I don't know if we could mix the units <laughs> around and get a 365 out of it somewhere, but we could, we could figure that out later. But. Fair enough. Well, 246 pounds. Wet, dry. I think the only way to get it wet is if you throw too much chain lube on it. There's otherwise, there's really no liquids on it yet. If you don't want to make an adjustment, if you want to, if you want to do something like that, can you do something like that with a computer? Or do you adjust it with your phone? What do you? How do you do that? So right now, I have to hook my laptop up to it to change uh, any number of things. I can change basically every aspect on how the bike rides. I just need to figure it out in the software, and you know, with, hopefully with minimal amount of swearing because that's computers and me, I'm a mechanical guy. So I do have uh, one thing on the phone, the battery management system is Bluetooth, so that's kind of neat. You can stand by the bike, have your phone out, look at the battery, and ask, well, who cares about battery management? This is the thing that is or is not gonna burn your house down. So the battery management is important to me, um, but a lithium battery, you know, you have to have a good battery management. It, they do not balance themselves like lead acid batteries, so I have to have a computer on the bike that will tell 24 individual cells to balance. Um, that's 
about the peak of the level of complexity that I can handle, really. Um, if you talk about an Alta battery, uh, I think that's maybe 96 cells in series. So where mine's 24, theirs is a, a lot higher voltage. Um, but I think it's it's all within a balance. I don't I don't really think that you need that high a voltage to really get the good power. Um, you need a combination of voltage and amperage and keep the complexity down. The motor is built by a company in Wisconsin called Mod Energy, and they build, a, they're probably one of the very few manufacturers in the states um, that are doing these high performance, uh, and it's a permanent magnet brushless DC motor, and pretty, pretty good energy density for what it is. Um, but one of the aspects about this bike that I wanted to make sure we had is I didn't have to have a secondary gear reduction. So the motor, the sprocket is right on the shaft of the motor. And that's um, when you have a, you know, a, a secondary reduction before that, now you have these losses, efficiency losses all the time. You have your, it's pulling out its taxes 5% because it's spinning another reduction, it's spinning more bearings. Um, so with being an electric bike, you know, you want to keep that as efficient as possible. And the motor that I'm using in it isn't maybe the perfectly ideal motor, but it is what's available. And uh, so this was, it was kind of an exercise in what can I build that's out there that's going to try to get close to these performance parameters that I wanted to achieve. And like I said, not break the bank doing it. Um, you know, anybody can go out and spend thousands and have custom everything made custom batteries a you know custom wild motor but from the parts that are really available uh, somewhat easily now in my opinion uh, it's a it's a pretty good stab at an electric bike so i'm assuming you probably went and rode it like just slow parking lot style riding for for a minute did it scale life out of you the first time you jumped that thing and you were like all right well here we go i don't know what's gonna happen but what's right. yeah in the You've been jumping it all day, and I, you yeah, know, the I way didn't that jump I, it first. He right. jumped it first. So it, uh, no, I, I took it off of a, you know, a few just regular size jumps, and it, it kind of flies like a two stroke. It, the, that's about the way that I would describe it. Yeah, there's no engine braking with this, and uh, I know it's kind of it's obvious that there isn't, but it's the first 20 times <laughs> I hit a jump, and I don't hit the back brake in the air. Like, I don't, I don't want no part of that. Mostly, it's just got to pull the clutch which I don't have to worry about in this, thank goodness, and I probably should do the back brake, but uh, I've just never been a back brake in the air kind of guy. So I just, burr, burr, burr. I was like a first time out there whenever I got back on this thing, but it's all right, it's, uh, it's fun to ride anyways, so. Yep, and on a 450, obviously you have the engine slowing you down. It's, it's kind of a work in progress. Uh, I have the ability to put regenerative braking on there, which would make it act more like a, like a four stroke, I would say. Um, I just haven't gotten that uh, gotten that set up yet. So I think that's one of the things to come in the future is to look for um, a left hand control where I have integrated rear braking, mechanical braking, and then also combining regenerative braking with the motor. So there is a, a point where you pull in where it will activate the regenerative braking of the motor. And then if you pull further, it will uh, activate the mechanical brakes as well. So just uh, just some things that we'll update in the future on the bike. You see, he's a mechanical engineer and he's basically speaking French to me because I don't know what most of that stuff means, but I do like his work and uh, his bike is sick. So I'm uh, pumped to get back on it and, uh, and do some more dirt biking.